In this lecture, we're going to go over directional terms that are used in anatomy and physiology. The etymology or origins of words in anatomy come from Latin or Greek. The first term that we are going to discuss is anatomical position. Anatomical position, by definition, is standing erect, eyes forward, palms forward, and toes forward. The position of lying on your back is supine. The position of lying on your belly is prone. Directional terms help reference body parts to one another. They come in pairs and their meanings are opposites to one another. Let's take a look at the first pair of words. Towards the front is anterior. Towards the back is posterior. So for example, the nose is anterior to the ear and the ear is posterior to the nose. Towards the head is superior and towards the feet is inferior. So for example, the shoulder is superior to the knee and the hips are inferior to the chest. The next set of terms orient the body in reference to the midline. Closest or towards the midline of the body is medial. Furthest or away from the midline is lateral. So for example, the ear is medial to the shoulder and the wrist is lateral to the knee. The next set of terms describe how close or how far away a structure is in reference to the trunk. Closest to the trunk is proximal. Furthest away from the trunk is distal. So for example, the shoulder is proximal to the elbow and the elbow is proximal to the wrist. Taking a look at the lower appendage, closest to the trunk is proximal. Furthest away from the trunk is distal. So for example, the hip is proximal to the knee and the knee is proximal to the ankle. In contrast, the ankle is distal to the knee and the knee is distal to the hip. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the different sections of the body along with the different body parts. There are two major sections of the human body. The first section includes everything that is located in the middle of the body, and the second section includes everything outside the middle of the body. The section of the body that includes everything in the middle, the head, the trunk, and the abdomen, is what we call the axial skeleton. Everything outside of the axial skeleton, which includes the arms and the legs, is what we call the appendicular skeleton. The arms we call the upper appendicular skeleton, and the legs we call the lower appendicular skeleton. Learning the different body parts of the human body is like learning a foreign language. Some words you may have heard before, others will be brand new to you. Let's take a look at the body parts that are in the axial skeleton or central region. The first body part is cephalic, which refers to the head. The second body part is cervical, which refers to the neck. The next word thoracic refers to the chest area. The abdominal region refers to the midsection or abdomen. And finally, the pelvic region refers to the hip area or pelvis area. Next, we'll take a look at the body parts of the upper appendicular skeleton. The first body part, brachial, refers to the arm. The second body part, antibrachial, refers to the forearm. Carpal refers to the wrist. And finally, digital refers to the fingers. Next, we take a look at the body parts of the lower appendicular skeleton. The first body part, coxal, refers to the hips. The next body part, femoral, refers to the thigh or leg. The next body part, crural, refers to the lower leg. 
tarsal refers to the ankle, and finally digital refers to the toes. As you can see, there are many more body parts of the human body. I chose to only go over the major body parts. In this lecture, we're going to discuss quadrants, regions, and body planes. Quadrants and regions help identify the locations of certain body parts or certain organs. For quadrants, the body is split up into four sections. The four sections are the upper right quadrant, the lower right quadrant, the upper left quadrant, and the lower left quadrant. The body can also be divided into nine regions, kind of like a tic-tac-toe board. The first region is the right hypochondriac region. The prefix hypo means below. Chondriac, chondra, refers to cartilage or the ribs. The next region is the epigastric region. The prefix epi means above. Gastric refers to the stomach. The next region is the left hypochondriac region. And the next region is the right lumbar region. Lumbar referring to the lower back. Next is the umbilical region or belly button area. Then the left lumbar region. The next region is the right iliac region. Iliac referring to the hip bone. Next is the hypogastric region. Remember, hypo means below, gastric refers to stomach. And finally, the last region is the left iliac region. Body planes are imaginary planes that dissect the human body in order to describe certain regions or sections of the body or to describe the direction of body movements. There are three body planes in the human body. The first body plane divides the human body into right and left segments or sections. This is called the sagittal plane. The second body plane divides the body into superior and inferior sections or segments. This is called the transverse plane. And finally, the last plane divides the body into anterior and posterior sections or segments, and this is called the frontal plane. In this video, we're going to talk about body cavities and serous membranes. A cavity in the human body is an open area in which you can find organs. There are two major body cavities of the human body. The first one is called the posterior or dorsal body cavity, and the second one is called the anterior or ventral body cavity. And each of these cavities can be further subdivided. Looking at the posterior cavity, the posterior cavity has two subdivisions, the cranial cavity and the vertebral canal. Next, the anterior cavity has three subdivisions. The first subdivision is the thoracic cavity. The second subdivision is the abdominal cavity. And the third subdivision is the pelvic cavity. Sometimes the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity are combined and referred to as the abdominal pelvic cavity. Next, we're going to take a look at the anterior cavity from an anterior view. Remember, the anterior cavity is made up of the thoracic cavity, and the abdominal pelvic cavity. The thoracic cavity has three subdivisions. The first is the mediastinum. The mediastinum is where you find respiratory passageways in the heart. The second cavity is called the pericardial cavity. The pericardial cavity is where you'll find the heart. And the third cavity is called the pleural cavity. And the pleural cavity is where you'll find the lungs. And finally, as mentioned previously, the abdominal pelvic cavity has two subdivisions. The first subdivision is the abdominal cavity, and the second subdivision is the pelvic cavity. Next, we're going to take a look at the parts of serous membrane. Now, serous membrane is one of many different types of membranes found in the human body. And the reason why I choose to discuss the serous membrane now is because the serous membrane is the membrane that covers organs. There are four parts of a serous membrane. The first part is called the visceral serous membrane. The second part is called the serous cavity. The third part is called the serous fluid. And the fourth part is called the parietal serous membrane. The visceral serous membrane is the membrane that touches the organ itself. The parietal serous membrane 
is the outermost membrane. In between the visceral and parietal serous membranes is a cavity called the serous cavity, and within the serous cavity you have a substance called serous fluid, which acts as a shock absorber and helps reduce friction. Let's take a look at the serous membrane that surrounds the heart, called the pericardium. There are four parts to the pericardium. The first part is called the visceral pericardium, or the membrane that touches the heart itself. The second part is the parietal pericardium, which is the outermost membrane of the heart. In between the visceral and peri uh, parietal pericardium is the pericardial cavity, and within the pericardial cavity, you have serous fluid or pericardial fluid. The membrane that surrounds the lungs is called the pleura, and the pleura has four parts as well. The first part is called the visceral pleura, and this is the membrane that attaches directly to the lungs. The second part is called the parietal pleura, and this is the outermost membrane. In between the visceral pleura and parietal pleura is a space called the pleural cavity, and within the pleural cavity you have pleural fluid. The serous membrane that surrounds abdominal pelvic organs is called the peritoneum, and the peritoneum has four parts. The first part is called the visceral peritoneum, which is the membrane that attaches directly to the abdominal pelvic organs. You have the parietal peritoneum, which is the outermost membrane, and in between the visceral and per uh, parietal peritoneum, you have the peritoneal cavity, and within the peritoneal cavity, you have serous fluid or peritoneal fluid. 